another of our MSM Mission Driven Organization students, Jane Nesbitt. Thank you for being here. It's wonderful to have the extended community here. I really appreciate it. My capstone is on women's leadership, specifically on women's leadership circles, their future enhanced financial sustainability. And as important probably is the focus on my own leadership. As my community reminds me, I walked in a leader, I'm leaving a leader, and I've had a lot of growth in between. So I'll tell you a little bit about the circles. Created by Carrie Seacrest, founder of Watershed Coaching. The circles are a six-month program for senior women leaders, 10 to 12 of them in a specific county across business sectors. They come together for a day and a half initially for a retreat. They end with a day of presentations and celebration and graduation. In between, they have three to four hours a month. The curriculum is very rich in that it includes research-based, in many cases, offerings such as authentic leadership, emotional intelligence, communication strategies, conflict management, working with your inner critic, presencing, uh, personality assessments. There is a coaching component. Carrie is a, is a coach, among other talents that she brings. And there's also a, an action research project. And uh, the evaluation data for these circles is fabulous. So the goal is for me to inform the future of these circles. I'll tell you a little more about that. The um, Watershed Coaching now is in partnership with Marlboro College to see if they're greater than the sum of parts, that they can bring the strength, the vitality, the reputation, the creativity, the talent of each organization together with Kerry front and center as the creator of these and with the infrastructure of Marlboro and its burgeoning um, reputation for leadership together to see if we can enhance and scale up potentially and broaden the focus and the uh, impact of these circles. The belief is that with the right audience, the right branding and marketing targeted to them, we can focus on a more uh, cost-effective targeted recruitment that will result in a more sustainable program. That's where the rubber meets the road. It takes a lot of time and energy to recruit. That's one of the challenges. My, uh, I'm usually the queen of ideas, and of course I end, started this capstone with absolutely no idea about what I would do. <laughs> um, but intuitively, uh, Kate presented me with this opportunity. It has, of course, morphed multiple times. It's going to be a three-year business plan, and of course the classmates rolled their eyes. And then we went to a, uh, it was going to be marketing materials and a fundraising plan. But in fact, what I'm ending up doing is informing, through some qualitative research and data review, some of the marketing work that will take place in the future. So my deliverables will be a report of recommendations and of uh, an analysis of other programs for women leaders in the area, uh, synthesis of the interviews that I conducted, and a list of businesses to approach with contacts. The fundamentals of these circles are that an effective leader means an effective business. So investing in our women leaders really impacts the economy of Vermont, the health of Vermont, the vitality of Vermont that taking risks can lead to breakthrough learning, and that we often do this in a safe environment. And in this case, it means in an environment of those who gender identify as women. Local support often can help to ensure, it doesn't guarantee, but helps to ensure that women will stay in Vermont. The quotes that you'll see throughout are from women, in many cases, that I interviewed. Carrie's approach is research and model based on centered leadership, on emotional intelligence, and on authentic leadership among others. So, so there's a lot of real deep work that's gone into thinking about the structure, the curriculum, the format of these circles. But again, it's partly my leadership journey. I'll talk about that much more in my retrospective. Um, started out life with a pretty traumatic early loss, difficult childhood. But somewhere all along the way, including in my Catholic school upbringing, I knew that I reach out to people, and I did all along the way, to, to lead me, to guide me, to support me, to affirm me. And I came out of that into my 20s and 30s with a great deal of resilience, compassion, and courage. And I took a lot of courage in my late 50s to decide to come to, back to school after a bit of a hiatus, believe me. I've had not a moment of regret, and uh, attribute a lot of my growth to this program and this community. 
moving into more self-awareness as I've embarked on this journey, working on my inner critic thanks to many of my classmates and, and colleagues and guides along the way, really building my authentic self, helping to mentor and being accepting of mentoring, marketable skills that will surely help me in the future. And in fact, um, it's official. Um, although I will maintain my 50% program role as of September 1st, I will be the co-executive director of my organization. <laughs> time but never in um, uh, in the executive role it's a great step on my journey um, and again on my journey I don't see her right now but my daughter is um, calling in from England her new home uh, some of the uh, influencers and inspirers for me in terms of my leadership legacy that I want to leave are my dear daughter Draylen and my granddaughter Raleigh Olivia Draylen already an incredible leader in her own right a community builder a person of great integrity PhD level evaluator who's done amazing work for organizations, uh, engaged and values driven. And my uh, almost three year old granddaughter, who is already authoritative and confident, <laughs> and speaking, we just hope she doesn't go out this second floor window, no screens in England. <laughs> um, there's been a wonderful study by the Colorado Women's College that focused on 14 business sectors. And across the board, no questions asked when women leaders, and mind you, we're 50% of the population, certainly not 50% of the women leaders. And I should stick, say that a caveat here, and I believe that's true of everyone involved with the program, uh, leadership doesn't equate to title. We're all called to be leaders. I absolutely believe that with all my heart and soul. But they really can, it's, the data is clear. When women leaders are present, companies do better. They're better in the marketplace. Their scope is expanded. They receive more awards, and on and on it goes. And you can see here, sometimes the vast like to do despair and hope, despair that we've been working on this, and women before me have been working on this equality for so long, there's just still so much gender bias, and, and hope that we, collectively, women and men, um, can really make a difference and are making a difference. But you can see here some of the, still some gaps in, you know, 46% of law school graduates, only 5% of managing, uh, managing partners, hello, you know. Um, arts and entertainment, we write 60% of the best sellers and make 27% of the earnings. Um, there's something wrong with this picture in terms of the planet's health. These circles are unique. They're county specific. There have been two in Wyndham, one in Bennington, and one in Washington. And part of the reason this is attractive to me is that the next hope for location is Chittenden, where I live. And uh, the fact that they're unique and that they're local based really has. Uh, impacted the women in their continuing support and networking. And almost all of the groups still have women meeting. The first group in Wind of 2011, three years afterwards, has nine of the 12 women meeting monthly. That's a real testament to what they learned. Return on investment, the professional action project, really uh, helps women impact their workplaces. The return on investment for workplaces. Starting fundraising programs, bringing in $100,000, developing new policies and procedures. Some women start their own businesses. Some women make very, very amazing personal life decisions. And we're going to just take a minute with Carrie in the room. I don't want to embarrass her, but in her voice, a minute. This is a little longer video of what motivated her to start the circle. And then we're so isolated. 
you know, siloed? And, and who do you go to peers if you're in a small organization, which many in Vermont are, you can't talk to your subordinates because that's not appropriate. It's not necessarily safe to talk to your board because they're still your boss. It's like, who do you go to and how do we create that support? Leadership in action. Thank you so much. <laughs> And so the first thing I did was I looked at some other women's leadership programs. I looked at 20, mostly in New England, a few in New York, and some nationally, including um, Beverly's uh, Center for Nature and Leadership and the Generative Council. And uh, really looking at uh, them, 13 of them are affiliated with colleges or universities, so Marlboro and Watershed are in good company. Uh, three of them are for emerging leaders, seven for middle and senior leaders. Some are specific to an industry. Uh, Smith has a program for uh, Fortune 500 companies which, with whom they work. Um, duration of frequency go, ranges from one to 12 days to a year. Some of the programs are for undergrad women and alums. The curriculum, in many cases, there are a few things that, that are similar to the curriculum that I outlined to you, but in some cases there are more management topics. Uh, some of the process and structure are similar. Self-reflection time, circle time. Um, it's not in the same way, for sure. Uh, speakers, etc. So I'm going to really probe that a little bit more to do a good analysis of that. Uh, the cost, I think, the cost point, um, you know, ranges from hundreds of dollars to fifteen thousand six hundred dollars. So I think we're in a good place cost-wise. Um, one of the pleasures of this was interviewing 19 women, uh, nine in Chittenden County. Some of my classmates, you'll see pictures here. I don't have quite everyone, but it was an incredible pleasure. I used a questionnaire that morphed over time. I asked them about their challenges and opportunities, et cetera. But you can see a little bit of the demographics here. Uh, the business sector, uh, you know, I, I touched on all sectors, regrettably not only one for profit. Uh, current roles, a little heavy on the senior management side. But that's who the, you know, we've been appealing to with the Women's Leadership Service in general. Again, senior management, regardless of, of seasoned or unseasoned, it can range in ages for sure. Years of leadership role range from a classmate who stepped in in just a year, or just a year in a role, to a woman who had been in leadership roles for up to 30 years. Budget size, classmates who have their own businesses, and I did not probe for their salaries, but I'm going to guess it's well under $100,000 a year, to a nonprofit with an $80 million budget, and a for-profit that did not disclose to me, or could not, the, the, uh, the rent, their earnings. The challenge is women uh, want to build a network. It's hard to do for some of the reasons that uh, Carrie mentioned. Becoming confident, I was astounded at how many women I talked to in senior leadership roles who uh, professed to still being a little bit unconfident. Feeling legitimate, uh, one woman, again, in leadership roles for years, I said, sometimes I feel like a fraud. Even though people tell me that I'm a leader, I don't quite believe it. Gave me credibility. A woman who manages mostly male construction, the fact that she's a woman who knows what she's doing and loves her tool belt, they almost can't wrap their heads around it. And uh, finding role models, some, uh, some of the greatest professional development that some of the women identify, in fact, the only professional development is they found role models by default or by intention. Um, needs and wants, network, a community, new learning, all of the, uh, the curriculum resonated, but uh, also negotiation, coaching and mentoring, and my report will, will really fill that out much more. Increased confidence, personal and professional growth. Uh, the interview impressions of women's leadership circles were that the size was great. In general, maybe six to 10 composition across sectors, across ages, as long as they're kind of operating as peer-to-peer -peer as leaders. Location, location, <coughs> rate, some concern about, gee, what if my sister-in-law's in the room, or you know, uh, a competitor, uh, duration, it reasonably good with the six months. Frequency, okay. Curriculum, wonderful. Recommendations, there'll be many more and the more articulated. House within the Center for New Leadership at Marlboro. Establish your niche, don't get too broad. Really, really dig in and be the best at the niche. Market across business sectors, but there may be room for a sector specific circle for sure. Market with program grads, so they may need a little stipend here and there or mileage covered. They're great voices for the program. The testimonials are fabulous provide easy online access. Most of the programs I looked at had really easy registration access. One woman said, I hope we come to a day when we're nominating women for this. Uh, also, work with industry associations, one of the benefits of Marlboro's and, and Watershed's connections, you can be at the meetings, be in the places where people are gonna notice and recognize. Continue to refine the curriculum, I know you do that, Carrie. 
include a local champions at Chittenden County, people want to see somebody with a name walk in the room, somebody that they really respect and honor in the community. Chittenden is not Bennington, is not Addison County. And maintain the current fee structure for now, I think that felt okay to folks. Sponsorships and uh, grant donor and support. Uh, in fact, um, you know, of the 4,038 nonprofits in the state, 76% of them have budgets of 500,000 or under. So, and that's just the nonprofit side of things. And in closing, some of what I've brought and what I've gained um, for this list of uh, amazing, uh, you can read it for yourself. Thank you so much. A credit to all of you for helping me to, to do this again. often start by, that that's the crux of this a little bit, there's an incredible uh, connection to women, calling, emailing, uh, beating the pavement, basically. As more and more of them develop and, are, and uh, women graduate, I think 40 or so women have been reached at this point, uh, we hope that name recognition and women talking to other women, that's already starting to happen a little bit. It happened between Wyndham and Washington. Um, so. Uh, you know, they start with an information session often, and we hope to do that in, listen to me, we. <laughs> I'm presuming, I know the recommendations may not be taken, and I understand that completely. Um, but so it's, it's really in, if you look at the organizational life cycle, it's really in kind of startup in some ways, which is why the alliance with Marlboro may really help to move it forward more quickly. Um, but it's been word of mouth, it's been really making cold calls, trying to find women. Um, I hope that answered your question, uh, which means that I can ask. Yes. Is there support for that kind of after circle, meaning that after there's a the main, you know, course, or whatever, you know, yeah. is there kind of that three years, like what's keeping them together for three years? It's is a, there support still continuing to <coughs> that? Yeah. Well, it's amazing. I think it's going to be group by group. They actually pay dues so that they can go to a retreat center every other month and modest, modest. Um, they bring, can bring in speakers, etc. Kerry has been involved with them. Uh, the Wyndham group and perhaps the other groups too uh, can be involved in a coaching capacity or in a speaking capacity. Um, I think that's an outstanding question about what level of support, whether it's online resources, etc., can continue to be provided because some groups are not going to be quite as um, direct, self-directed around this. And I think in terms of their being influencers for the future, in some ways, we need them to continue. <coughs> Great question. Um, I want to pick up on this slide, and you talked about your your own personal leadership growth. As you look ahead, you have this new, another MDO student who gets her dream job. Um, dream job for now, yes. For now, dream job for now. Um, what are what do you see as your leadership challenges or growth opportunities in this new role? Well, the wonderful thing about Marlboro, one of many, is that I've been able to take amazing resources back. I led the strategic plan for project management. I brought all kinds of things back that have informed our board and our staff. And so already I think I have a lot of credibility there with our current executive director who's moving for 20 hours because of health issues, and myself uh, in terms of being a resource. Big challenges, Pat, I'm going to say are uh, diverse from our income. We're very heavy on the federal side. The AHECs aren't getting any more federal money beyond kind of level funded. Uh, also board development. We have well-intended board, but as we know in other classes and other classmates will attest, they have a long way to go to move from a yeah. adequate board to a really great board. So board training, fundraising, we've already got some of that in place. Um, I tapped Andy Robinson to do some board training and philanthropy and fundraising and uh, maybe talking to some others of you for various things. So I really feel like it's providing leadership around fundraising, being out in the community a little bit more. We're looking at our programs to see if we can refine them. We work in workforce development and healthcare, and then also board development. 
So I think my plate will be full for this. Any other questions? Or Well, I thought that being in the company of these women was amazing. You know, at first I was like, oh, I've got to call somebody I don't know, and you know, and you think that'd be easy for me. It isn't always it's getting easier. So I think uh, how much we had in common in some ways, in terms of our struggles and opportunities, how many of them didn't have formal leadership training. It was quite interesting. Some did, you know, one with a 50,000 program here and this and that, but some, many didn't. Um, I also think that I made some very good connections, and that was a a hope, but maybe a little bit of a surprise. I think maybe I've identified some women interested, and maybe even a company that might be interested. So uh, that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hear it. For you.